This conference will now be recorded. Welcome to the program. My name is uh, Marty Shankman, and I'm joined by Fraser Rice. Uh, Fraser, why don't you tell everybody uh, uh, what you do and, and your connection to Tennessee, and then we'll enlighten everybody about the wonders of uh, trust planning in Tennessee. Great. Thanks, Marty, for having me on. Uh, I'm the Northeast Regional Director for Pendleton Square Trust. I also run a podcast around wealth topics called Wealth Actually. And your contact information will be on the last slide for everybody that's interested. So, so there's a number of jurisdictions that people have used for uh, trust planning for many years that uh, uh, we, we sort of refer to as trust-friendly jurisdictions, uh, Delaware, Nevada, Alaska, South Dakota, perhaps the most common, but there've been a host of jurisdictions that have uh, uh, really added uh, very advantageous rules and legislation over the years. And I think Tennessee has just been off a lot of practitioners and clients' radar. And what we hope to do is, is have you, uh, I guess, make a sales pitch for uh, Tennessee <laughs> and tell people about some of the advantages. Um, sure. So why don't, why don't you um, uh, give us a little introduction? I mean, one of the things I know that you mentioned when we were first talking is that people think uh, Tennessee is a, a Johnny-come-lately, but it, it, it's really not true. Yeah, it's had a chancery court since 1834, and it uh, installed the Universal Trust Code in 2004. So we're coming up on 20 years of jurisprudence within the trust world and a dedicated chancery court for much longer than some states have existed. Oh, that's great. Uh, state income tax? None. Uh, there used to be a Hall's tax for state residents. That was repealed as of 2021. And um, one of the things that people have been focused on, and, and we'll, we'll just briefly mention after you explain uh, Tennessee's advantages, uh, is dynasty or long-term trust multi-generational planning. Um, how does Tennessee right. compare in that regard? Yeah, so it goes past the rule against perpetuities up to 360 years. So for the vast majority of long-term dynasty planning, Tennessee fits the bill. So that's great. And obviously, uh, for those that aren't uh, aware uh, where we are presently today, the, uh, uh, there's a potential for a change in the tax law that would assess uh, effectively, it sounds like a GST tax or change the GST exclusion every 50 years that will certainly hinder dynastic planning. But that, that um, uh, Frazier, doesn't seem any different in Tennessee than any place else. I mean, I think that's going to be a universal problem. Yeah, that's my opinion, too. Yeah. How about uh, privacy laws? That's something that's uh, one of the, uh, you know, points of interest to people looking at uh, trust friendly jurisdictions. Yeah. So one thing that makes Tennessee interesting compared to many jurisdictions is it permits trustees to withhold documents from the current and remainder beneficiaries. These are silent trust provisions. Uh, and that can be done at the direction of the grantor, the trust protector or the trust advisor. Uh, for those people who get a little worried about lack of controls, uh, trust protectors are in place to make sure that the trust is administered correctly. So that's that's great. Uh, let's go on and talk about a few more. Um, I know that uh, uh, one of the interesting developments uh, is the use of special purpose entities. And for those that are not familiar with it, uh, let's say I'm in um, uh, New York and I create a trust in a, a trust-friendly jurisdiction like Tennessee. Uh, but I want to name my brother as my investment uh, advisor or trust protector. If he lives in New York, that's another connection to New York. So what some people have started to do, and it's, it's, I don't think I, I don't think I would say it's 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 commonly done, but it's it's certainly something that's starting to get more attention, is creating an entity to house the advisor so that there's a, a another uh, block or difference between the advisor and my home state. Um, Grazer, why don't you comment on, on Tennessee, because you have some very special rules for that that most right. states don't have. Yeah, so the Tennessee allows for special purpose entities the, that effectuate what you just described. Uh, what it also does is it's a great way to consolidate functions within one entity when you're using that entity to administer different trusts. Provides a little bit more uh, consolidation slash organization around that. Uh, the other part that's interesting is that uh, really where it kind of comes into play uh, in, a, in a meaningful way is in getting that level of abstraction from a CITUS perspective around the advisors. Uh, and that could have anything from asset protection to uh, tax benefits. And can let me ask you a question about what you said, because I, I, I didn't realize it when we were speaking before. Can I set up one 
special purpose entity in Tennessee to have that entity be the trust protector for three different family trusts, or do I have to have yeah. separate ones? No, yeah, I mean, at the discretion and depending on what your goals are, but yes, we've seen it where one special purpose entity is serving a function on different trusts. Oh, that's great. Um, decanting? Extremely flexible. Uh, in addition, uh, Tennessee is very open to using non-judicial settlement agreements and other tools like that. So that's something that could be even more critically important because uh, if, if, if the current administration enacts sweeping changes to the estate uh, tax rules, um, a lot of the existing trust structures are going to have to be modified to address some of those changes. Um, so certainly flexible decanting is important. Now here's my, my okay. I, I would say it's my favorite, but uh, as a vegetarian, I can't, I can't quite, quite say that. But uh, barbecue and country music? Uh, you're talking about notch. Nashville? Top notch. That's right, top notch stuff. <laughs> Tennessee so, does uh, well there. And 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 if I set up a trust for a client in Tennessee and come down to Tennessee to you uh, to to see my trust and meet my trustee, I I, I can eat well and hear good music. So that that's, that's certainly sure. a, that's a positive. I don't know that you get that in any of the other jurisdictions that people talk about. Um, why don't you take <laughs> a minute and talk about uh, community property? Right. So uh, something we're seeing in the estate planning world, uh, and it's something you, you'll talk about, too. I mean, the, the step up in basis is controversial for the Biden tax plan. But for married couples, uh, Tennessee is one of the very few states that where you can convert joint or separate pro property into community property for a full step up in basis. Uh, that can have major impacts uh, from an estate planning perspective on an after tax basis. So long as we still have step up. Uh... South Dakota, Alaska, and Tennessee, are, I believe, are the only three states that let people that reside in other jurisdictions take advantage of their laws and, and avail themselves of the community property basis step up. So that's an incredible planning opportunity right. and uh, something that certainly if you have a client, uh, uh, you know, again, depending on the change of law, it could be useful. Um, uh, why don't you mention briefly um, uh, the uh, private trust company rules, and then we only have a minute left. We'll talk about the three factors that you mentioned. Sure. So I'll fast forward to the three factors because private trust companies are part of that. Uh, we think Tennessee is a very useful jurisdiction for SLAT planning, uh, provides for uh, diversified jurisdiction to get rid of the reciprocal trust doctrine uh, in fact patterns. Uh, domestic and foreign revocable and irrevocable trusts for foreign families and with U.S. ties. Uh, Tennessee is extremely competitive with the lack of state income tax and strong dynasty and direction trust flexibility. Uh, it's also easier for families to get to Tennessee than many of the other jurisdictions for those people who want to have that physical presence. Um, finally, that uh, what we were describing before with the private trust company world, uh, for those companies that want to bring that in-house, uh, the capital requirements and the flexibility are favorable in Tennessee versus many jurisdictions in terms of capital requirements, in terms of regulatory intersection with the government, and ultimately, uh, in terms of being able to consolidate family office and private trust company functions in a central location that's state income tax free. That's great. I want to thank uh, Fraser Rice and Pendleton Square Trust for the comments. Please keep in mind that any of the comments on this or any of the other uh, video clips on the website are for educational purposes only. Don't take any action without consulting uh, an attorney or other appropriate uh, professional advisor. Fraser, thank you very much. Thanks, Marty.